Okay, the first one was when did you first hear of John? Was it John and Willie or was it just John? I heard of Otway first, but I didn't actually hear of him. I went for a drink in a pub called The Red Cow in Hammersmith. And I went with a roadie, a friend of mine. And it was a reasonably rowdy pub, and there were, I think, a number of other roadies in there. We were just meeting for a drink. And uh, it turned out that Otway, this was 1976, so not many people and at that time had heard of Otway. And uh, um, Otway wasn't going down that well within the first kind of five minutes of the um, uh, of the show and you know, there was a bit of feedback and of course the roadies were shouting and you know, oi John turn you this down or you that up or what have you. Um, roadies can be you know normally they're a charming bunch of people but I think when they get together they get a little bit rowdy. Um, and uh, anyway the show went on and John is compelling and it was marvellous to watch. I mean, I was intrigued right from the beginning, but to see him over the space of an hour and a half gradually taming this crowd until he had them eating out of his hand. And his big finale was he came on and had... He, um, he sang the Shirley Bassey song, I Who Have Nothing. And he took his, he ripped his shirt off and sang the song and ate the shirt. And the crowd just stood there with their eyeballs hanging out on their, uh, hanging out on their sockets, gazing in mute admiration. It, it, it was a wonderful vision. I thought, oh, that's John Otway. I'll probably never see him again. When he was signed, was he, with, he was with Willie as well at the time, was he? I think he was with Willie, yes. In fact, I'm sure he was with Willie, yeah. In fact, he was with Willie. No doubt about it, yeah. And when was the next time you saw him? Oh. Uh, well, he had the hit, and uh, I can't remember seeing him live until probably about three years later when I was uh, I was compare of a madness tour, a Christmas tour in 1980 and uh, they got Otway and Willie to support them which was very interesting because I was excited about that. I thought, oh yes, yeah, Otway, great, wow, that's wonderful. And uh, Madness have a particular audience, you know, at that time it was kind of young skinheads and they're all, most of them are lovely and their mums love them and, you know, scarves and whatever, they look a bit, you know, they're crumbies and what have you, but, um, and they knew what Madness was and they thought that was Madness. But then, before Madness comes on, here comes real Madness, here comes Otway, and Willie, who had a per he had long hair, he has long hair with his homemade instruments, blaring away with this kind of wonderful heavy metal sound. The long hair, he's got a purple wig on top of that. He wears a great coat. I mean, he's a farmer, Willie, and gum boots. And that wasn't his stage gear. He wore that all all day from the moment he got up. So when we went out walking round Edinburgh or whatever, you know, we go down Prince's Street and there'd be Willie in his wellies and great coat and long hair and his purple wig on top of that. So he's got some fairly strange looks. And uh, um, the skinheads were sitting there in their chair, you know, they were see, seeing these two. And Willie would, uh, Otway would do, you know, do his songs and what have you, and then he'd do his somersaults, and then he'd come tumbling down off a, uh, am, you know, amplifier, a Marshall stack in the corner. He'd somersault off that, and then he'd somersault into the audience, still playing, and he'd walk across their shoulders. And of course, by this time, the kids were terrified, but, oh, you know, the charm, the that, that quizzical charm that Otway has. Um, meant that, 
you know, they'd, they'd really, they'd, they'd seen something, you know, this was real madness. And in fact, when actual madness came on, it was quite a relief to them, because that was, at last, sanity. What did the boys make of it in madness? Oh, I think they liked it very much, yeah. I think so. I mean, you'd have to ask them, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that uh, Otway and Willie upstaged them, as I recall. I'm not certain about that. Because you were doing two nights sometimes, weren't you? Or two shows a day? A matinee? Yeah. Yes, actually there was a matinee, but there was a there was a um, uh, the, 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 there was a conjurer, there was a magician, I think, on in the afternoon. Um, oh, I can't I can't remember who that was. But, uh, yeah, so yeah, there was a sort of twelve-year-old's show, and then there was a fourteen-year-old's show for the evening. And of course, John was the same for either. Mm? John was the same for both selection of audience, twelve or fourteen. Well, I say he didn't do the twelve. Oh, he, he did. Yeah, he did the, no, he did the. He did the fourteen. They, they'll, you know, after, you know, fifteen hundred quid's worth of uh, therapy, they'll, they'll be all right, I think. Have you worked with John since? Uh, I've not worked with him, no. But I've, I've seen him. I mean, I go and see him probably once a year, and it's, it's my favourite show. It's my favourite outing of the year. Does he still send you like uh, leaflets and pamphlets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get all the. Uh, um, uh, uh, always looks very unpromising the uh, the Otway fan mail. Um, it looks like a bill, and you just think, no, I'll tear it in half, and you break it open. And they have a different kind of computer stick-ons on the, on the front, so it always foxes you, you know. It doesn't, it doesn't say anything like, it's all right, this is, only, this is Otway on the front. It just looks like a final demand, you know, for that parking ticket or, you know, that gas bill. And then you rip it open and oh, thank God for that, it's Otway. Bloody hell, it's Otway. Ah! <laughs> How would you describe John's act to somebody who perhaps has never seen it? <laughs> Um, I don't know, it's impossible to, it, it is impossible to describe because he is like no one else. So I suppose that's the way I, I, I would describe it. It's, it, it, it. it's idle to say that he's like Max Wall because he isn't like Max Wall. But to the extent that his show has been virtually unchanged for the last 20, almost 30 years, no, it can't, no it's 20 years. 20 years, yeah, that I've, uh, I've seen him. Um, I, I really like the way that he hasn't, um, he hasn't taken off on television. I think, you know, I think his show is impervious to television. Um, if he had, he would have had to come up with something new each week. And he's done it in a curiously old-fashioned way, um, a way of having a few songs, and he adds occasionally in some of the shows he'll drop one or two to the uh, great distress of those of us who love um, uh, Houses on Fire. John, when you next come to play to me, sing Houses on Fire. Um, but then he'll put in things like The Highwayman, which is, you know, the, the Alfred Noyes poem, which is a... Uh, just the most breathtaking rendition. I mean, when he talks about he had a French cocked hat on his forehead and uh, um, a coat of the claret velvet and breeches of brown doe skin, and he's questioning. He's look, he you know why is this? And there's this ding digga ding digga ding digga and tlot, 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 and the, and he's riding on the guitar and the the guitar sticking out in front of him. It's you can see it, he just brings it absolutely to life. And it's the highwayman, and it's Otway, but it's not Otway, it's the highwayman, but it's not the highwayman, it's, it's Otway. It's, it's kind of like a film, in a funny sort of a way. Um, but as you say, I'm making a complete mess of this. It, it's impossible to describe quite what an Otway show is like. I've seen him on his own, and he has to be two people or three people. I mean, he's lots and lots of people, but 
Um, it's a different kind of a show from when he's with someone like Barrett, who is a perfect foil. I mean, he's, he, you know, he is with... <laughs> he is, isn't he? <laughs> Brilliant. Would you consider John to be a one-hit wonder? Well, I don't think there's much dispute uh, on that score. He is the one-hit wonder. I mean, he's made a career out of being a one-hit wonder. Uh, I think it would be fatal if he had another hit, personally. What, what, what would be... You mentioned uh, The Highwayman and Houses on Fire. I guess that's your favourite song, is it? it, it it's one of my favourite songs, but... Uh, what did you think of the hit? Bit of a bizarre song. Um, well, it's very, it's yeah, it's very Otway. It's not. Um, it was a. It was a wonderful way for him to, you know, break into worldwide acclaim. I think, you know, as an introduction to Otway. But he's. Uh, um, He's not one-dimensional. Uh, you know, he's not. It's not a humorous act. I mean, it's an it's a, an immensely sensitive act, and uh, I mean, there are times when I've been watching him singing songs like Geneva, something like that. You know, when I've really had goose pimples, you know, all the way down my spine. I can. I'm sitting there. I can, I, I realise, you know. I mean, I'm awful when I go to these. When I go to films and that, you know, because I. Uh, and I'd have the same with Otway, is my tongue hangs out and I'm right in there, I'm hanging on to my seat and people say, it's all right, it's only, you know, we're in a pub, we're in it, you know, it's not real. But for me it is real, you know. And uh, um, I've often wondered when he does headbutts, which is, uh, um, and, you know, it's another marvellous song. Um, I've got too many superlatives in this. See, I, I, I think you're maybe getting the gist that I do like Otway, but I, I wonder if he has any feeling left in this part of his head. You know, I've seen him bashing mm, the, you know, and I'll give it head butts. And, you know, he's had little um, uh, contusions or whatever they are on, on, on his forehead, which don't heal, and then he'll bash it again. I mean, at the end of 14 days, I thought he was actually going to have a dent in his head. Um, I mean, I do know people who seriously go around bashing their heads against things, and they don't have any feeling here. But I personally, I think John's got tons of feeling here. <laughs> John's been, as you mentioned, for almost 20, nearly 25 years doing the same set. How long do you think he can last doing the same set? I think, well, I mean, I think he can go on until he's 90. I certainly hope he does, because I want to, you know, uh, it's the high point of my year, and I just keep going. I mean, his, uh, uh, his fixed position, as it were, the way that he sees the world from his front room, I mean, from one, uh, from one place, is something that I... I mean, I admire in someone like someone like Jane Austen, you know, who sits, mm -hmm. and the world goes by her window, and you know where you are. So it's it, to that extent, um, it's easy to identify with John because you know, you all, we all, everyone has got a window that the world goes by and we all think wow I wish we were out there you know and you want to go out and go beyond over the next hill and you know you go over two or three hills and you become a tourist and you don't know what you're talking about but when you're doing it from John's perspective is it comes it all absolutely comes back through John so you get his viewpoint so whether he's doing you know a song of his own that he has written, or whether he's doing The High Women, or if he's doing The Alamo. 
I mean, I, you know, I've sat watching the Alamo with tears just pouring down my face. You know, it's, it's a wonderful song, you know. He, he makes it, he makes it real and he makes it now, you know. I'm a great fan of Davy Crockett, having, having sung myself the 18th and many people say the definitive version of the Ballad of Davy Crockett, which was on the flip side of Whoops a Daisy, which got to 187 in the hit parade in 1979. So in case you don't think I don't know what I'm talking about, I do. Where do you think, where, where do you feel that John's real talent is? What is his real Uh, that's impossible to answer. Um, He's an entertainer, isn't he? In the old-fashioned sense, I think. It's hard to compare him with somebody else, really, isn't it? You know, not like Sinatra, because he's nothing like Sinatra. He's not. He is unique in that respect. But you know, why? Why is he unique? What is his talent that's made him unique? Uh, in a curious way, I don't want to know, you know, I don't want to identify it. It's a, a total bloody mystery. <laughs> Hotway's talent. <laughs> what makes him a success? <laughs> the very thing that makes him not a success. Uh, well, it depends what you equate you know, how you um, evaluate success. I think the fact that he's doing it 25 years later, uh, the fact that he still hasn't got a job, makes him one of the most successful people in the universe, I would say. Do you feel he's one of the best, I hate the word, alternative acts around? Um, well, I think of all the other acts as alternative, you know. I think John is central. But I say that, I'm not just being flip. I, I, I think that he, I think that his show genuinely comes from the heart. And, you know, to be serious for a moment, that is, uh, that is how, I mean, he reaches the hearts and minds of everyone who comes. I don't, I've never seen a dissatisfied punter walking out of the, uh, well, well, you know, there certainly weren't any walking out of the red cow, and they all should have gone out after seven minutes, but somehow they stayed there. He has this ability to, to win people round. I don't know how. Are you still involved in music at all? Do you still no, no. No, totally got no I, I think that anyone who was in music would say that I was totally uninvolved in music. Thank you for asking, David. Sweet of you. Um, if you could sum up, I know you can't sum up someone like John in a one word, but in a sentence, a series of words, how would you describe him, do you think? <laughs> You'll have to turn the word. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. God? O oh, what way, wherefore art thou, why have we forsaken you, we are not worthy. If there's one piece of advice you could give to him, what advice would it be? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, these great questions. Um, Whatever you do, John, don't appear on television. <laughs> um, advice, no, serious good advice. Um, I can't think of any advice there. Right, maybe we'll come back. <laughs> come this, one's, this one's directed to 